so good morning viewers <coughs> in the previous class we came to know how to find the magnitude of a resultant when two forces acting at a point simultaneously so we came to know r is equal to square root of p square plus q square plus 2 pq cos theta where p and q are the two different forces which are acting at a material point o simultaneously where theta is the angle of inclination between those two forces from this mathematical form we came to know the magnitude of this resultant can be found if you know the magnitude of the two individual forces acting on a body simultaneously and the uh, if you know the angle of inclination between those two forces this is the summary so at this stage we stop our discussion in the last class now the thing is <coughs> this resultant is a force definitely it is a vector quantity from this equation we came to know what is the magnitude of the resultant now the question is in which direction this resultant acts so continue the same derivation try to have a mathematical form to find the direction of a resultant once again consider the right angled triangle ocd in triangle ocd you see this is alpha this is this is alpha uh, is the angle between the force p and the resultant in triangle ocd try to define tangent of an angle here angle is alpha tangent of an angle that is tan alpha it is a ratio from opposite to side to the adjacent side what is the opposite side it is cd what is the adjacent side it is od tan alpha is equal to cd by od so by geometry this od can be rewrite as od can be rewrite as oa plus ad this is oa plus ad that is tan alpha now equal to so we already know cd is nothing but a ac sin theta ac sin theta divided by oa oa represents the force p plus ad so in triangle acd we already know in the previous class ad can be rewrite as ac cos theta that is ac cos theta then you can rewrite this one as tan alpha is equal to ac means it is the <coughs> side parallel to side ob where ob represents the force q therefore ac you can replace it by q this is q sin theta divided by p plus again ac is q cos theta this is the equation used to find the direction of a resultant or even tan alpha is equal to q sin theta divided by p plus q cos theta can be rewrite by using the knowledge of a inverse of a function alpha is equal to tan inverse of q sin theta divided by p plus q cos theta this is the expression used to find the direction of a resultant now our task is almost completed so we have two forces p and q which are acted upon by a material material body at o simultaneously now we are interested to calculate what is the resultant of these two forces so to find the magnitude of the resultant this is the mathematical form we used to find the direction of the resultant this is the mathematical form or this is the mathematical form we used so from the examination point of view so it may be a very important question derive an expression for magnitude and direction of a resultant when two forces acting on a body simultaneously definitely this question is awarded for 5 marks so nothing is there in this question so try to concentrate the mathematical steps and what is the physics behind these steps now <coughs> while uh, knowing after knowing the 
mathematical equations for both magnitude and direction of the resultant, we may face several circumstances in finding its magnitude and direction of the resultant when two forces acting at a point simultaneously. The circumstances may be these two forces acting along the same line in the same direction. Now, the question is what is the magnitude and direction of a resultant when two forces when two forces acting along the same line in the same direction. So, the situation may be like this. So, this is the line on which this is the force P in this direction acts this is the force Q in this direction acts. I mean two forces acting along the same line in the same direction. Now, the question is what is the magnitude of the resultant? What is the direction of the resultant in this case? Now, the thing is if the two forces acting along the same line in the same direction means definitely they are parallel forces. I mean between the two parallel lines the angle of inclination is definitely 0. So, here P and Q are unknown, but uh, the angle of inclination between P and Q is 0 degree. Therefore, while finding the magnitude of the resultant you can write R is equal to square root of P square plus q square plus 2 p q cos theta is 0 degree. But in trigonometry you came to know the numerical value of cos 0 degree is 1. Therefore, this expression takes a shape r is equal to p square plus q square plus 2 p q into 1. So, now you just observe here this is in the form of a square plus b square plus 2 a b. Therefore, you can rewrite this one as a plus b whole square in the place of a there is b in the place of b there is q. Here square and square root gets cancels you can write r is equal to p plus q is the magnitude of a resultant when two forces acting along the same line in the same direction. So, this is uh, how the magnitude of the resultant is then in which direction the resultant acts to find the direction of the resultant in this expression simply wherever theta is there you just write it as 0. So, that is alpha is equal to tan inverse of q into sin 0 divided by p plus q into cos 0. We know that numerically sin 0 is equal to 0, cos 0 is equal to 1, but uh, 0 divided by anything is 0 that is therefore, alpha is equal to tan inverse of 0. We also know tan inverse of 0 is simply 0. So, this is this gives the direction of a resultant. I mean you can say when two forces acting along the same line in the same direction their, their resultant their magnitude of the resultant is simply equal to sum of those two individual forces and the direction of the resultant is the same as that of either of the two forces. This is the one of the case you face while finding the magnitude and direction of a resultant. So, you can consider some other case. So, to find the magnitude and direction of a resultant. So, there is a little bit of modification in this case. <coughs> Here, the two forces acting along the same line instead of in the same direction now they are acting in the opposite to direction. The situation may be like this P acts towards left Q acts towards right. Here also the two forces acting along the same line, but their, uh, their direction is quite opposite definitely the angle of inclination between these two forces that is theta in this case is 180 degree. To know with 
what magnitude the resultant acts in which direction resultant acts in both the expression wherever theta is there you have to put 180 degree. So, <coughs> r is equal to square root of p square plus q square plus 2 p q cos 180 degree cos 180 degree you came to know the new its numerical value by allied angle concept 180 can be rewrite as 90 plus 90 cos of 90 plus theta it is minus sin 90. So, therefore, minus of 1 is the numerical value of the cos 180 degree therefore, you can write r is equal to p square plus q square plus 2 p q into minus 1 observe here plus into minus it becomes minus when it becomes minus it is in the form of a square plus b square minus 2 a b definitely it represents a minus b whole square under square root again square and square root gets cancels you will get r is equal to p minus q this is the mathematical expression for a resultant when two forces acting along the same line in the same direction. Now, <coughs> what about the so direction of the resultant in this case that is alpha is equal to tan inverse of q into sin theta is 180 degree divided by p plus q into cos 180 degree. Again using allied angles try to have a numerical value of the sin 180. Sin 180 can be given as sin of 90 plus 90. Sin of 90 plus theta is cos theta it gives cos 90. Cos 90 is numerically 0. Q into 0 cos 180 is minus 1. Again 0 divided by anything is 0 alpha is equal to tan inverse of 0 that is alpha is equal to 0. So, the summary is <coughs> whenever the two forces acting along the same line in the same in the opposite direction the magnitude of its resultant is simply equal to difference between the magnitude of the individual forces and the direction of the resultant is in the direction of the greater force. I mean if p is greater the direction of the resultant acts in the direction of p. If q is greater the direction of the resultant acts in the direction of q. This is one of the case. So, you have to uh, know how to calculate the so magnitude and direction of a resultant. One more special case is there. So, let us concentrate how that uh, special case is studied. <coughs> you see we have two forces instead of acting along the same line in the same direction or in the opposite direction. So, here the two forces which are mutually perpendicular to each other we have two forces both are acting on a body simultaneously. The speciality is those two forces are mutually perpendicular to each other. We know that. So, when we have a two mutually perpendicular lines their uh, uh, angle of inclination between them is 90 degree. In such a case, so the angle of inclination theta is equal to uh, 90 degree. Now, to find the magnitude and direction of the resultant in both the expressions wherever theta is there you have to replace it by 90 degree. So, the magnitude of the resultant takes the shape r is equal to p square plus q square plus 2 p q into cos 90. We know that uh, the numerical value of cos 90 is 0. 2 p q into 0 is 0 therefore, r is only square root of p square plus q square. This is the expression for magnitude of a resultant. Now, <coughs> to know the direction of a resultant uh, alpha this is equal to tan inverse of q into sin theta is 90 degree divided by p plus q 
cos of theta is again 90 degree. We know that sin 90 is 1, cos 90 is 0. Alpha is equal to tan inverse of q into 1 divided by p plus q into 0. That is alpha is equal to tan inverse of q divided by p gives the direction of a resultant. So, these are the three special cases under these three special cases we are able to find the magnitude and direction of a resultant. <coughs> While uh, <coughs> writing a answer to this question in the examination, so scan the question once or twice till you, you, you can able to identify to what extent answer is expected. Suppose, so what is the expression for magnitude of the resultant of the two vectors acting on a body simultaneously. So, your journey star ends when you have a r is equal to p square plus q square plus 2 p q cos theta. Instead of that, what is the magnitude of resultant of the two perpendicular forces acting on a body simultaneously. So, after uh, deriving r is equal to root p square plus q square plus 2 p q cos theta. So, you add something more. So, given the two forces are perpendicular to each other, therefore, the angle of inclination is 90 degree. So, therefore, expression takes the shape r is equal to root p square plus q square. Instead of this, what is the magnitude and direction of the resultant when two forces acting along the line in the same acting along the same line in the same direction. So, you have to derive r is equal to root p square plus q square plus 2 p q cos theta and alpha is equal to tan inverse of q sin theta divided by p plus q cos theta. Later on, you have to add little bit in the form such that here two forces acting along the same line in the same direction in this case theta equal to 0. Therefore, replace theta is equal to 0 and further simplify to get the complete answer. So, first scan the question and decide to what extent we have you have to answer then start right from the examination point of view this is a very important question please concentrate more on this. <coughs> So, now let us concentrate on concurrent and parallel forces. So, <coughs> our concentration is more on parallel forces. What is concurrent means? So, we have the more number of forces say this is P. So, this is q, this is r. So, all these forces p, q and r <coughs> having the same common point from the line of action starts from the same common point. Therefore, these three forces you can call it as a concurrent forces. So, if number of the force acting on a body such that they have they, they have a same kind of common point of application therefore these forces are called as a concurrent forces now what is parallel forces means little bit of different from the concurrent forces when two or more forces acting in a plane or acting on a body such that their line of action are parallel to each other you can have a force say F1, so this is F2, this is F3, this is F4, this is F5 like that. So, here we have the set of forces F1, F2, F3, F4 and F5 such that their line of action are parallel to each other. Such forces are called as a parallel forces. If number of forces acting on a body such that their line of their line of action are parallel to each other, definitely they are parallel to each other, such forces are called as a 
parallel forces. Again, these uh, parallel forces are classified into two types. One is the like parallel forces, another one is the unlike parallel forces. Like means same, unlike means not same. I mean, what I want to say is, <coughs> so we have the parallel forces such that their line of action in the same direction. So, if the parallel forces have the same line of action, then corresponding parallel forces are referred as a like parallel forces, like parallel forces may be like this. So, may be like this. So, if the two or more parallel forces whose line of action uh, is same, then corresponding parallel forces we referred as a, so like parallel forces. If not, we have a parallel forces where their line of action is not same, they have a opposite line of action. Corresponding parallel forces, you can call it as a unlike parallel forces. Schematically, unlike parallel forces may be represented like this. So, if the for a if in case of a parallel forces, if their line of action is the same, then corresponding parallel forces are called as the line of action uh, like parallel forces. In case of a parallel forces, if the line of action is not same or opposite to each other, corresponding parallel forces, you call it as a unlike parallel forces. Now, how to find the our uh, resultant in case of a like parallel forces? So, simply it is a <coughs> not much more concentrated in, case in your syllabus, but uh, only little bit of idea I will say how to write the resultant in case of like and unlike parallel forces. We have two forces say uh, this is the force P acting on a body at A and this is the uh, acting on the same body at the point B. What is the resultant means definitely the resultant may be here like this act at C. So, we have the two parallel forces P and Q acting at A and B the resultant is R which acts at C as shown. So, in such a case the resultant is I mean the resultant in case of the like parallel forces is simply equal to sum of the two individual forces. Then with which direction the resultant acts in case of a like parallel forces means with common sense only you can say the direction of the resultant is same as that of either force P or the force Q. Definitely the resultant is parallel to either P or Q. So, what the <coughs> convention should be follows in case of the like parallel forces to have a resultant means in case of the like parallel forces the magnitude of the resultant is simply equal to magnitude of the two individual forces and the direction of the resultant is same as that of either of the two forces. Similar concept you have to implement for the unlike parallel forces. Now, the question is we have the two unlike parallel forces. What is the magnitude and direction in case of the unlike parallel forces? You can say this is the force P. So, this is the force Q. So, P is acts at A and Q is acts at Q. <coughs> Now, Q is acts at B. Now, in such a case, what is the magnitude of the resultant means? Here, magnitude of the resultant can be given as the difference between the two individual forces P minus Q or Q minus P. P difference with Q <coughs> gives the uh, magnitude of the resultant in case of a unlike parallel forces. In which direction the resultant follows means 
in the direction of the resultant in case of the unlike parallel forces is the direction of the greater force. If Q is greater than P, definitely the resultant R acts in the direction of Q. If P is greater than Q, definitely the resultant R acts in the direction of P. So, simply in case of a like parallel forces, the magnitude of the resultant is sum of the individual forces. In case of the unlike parallel forces, the magnitude of the resultant is difference between the two individual forces. The direction of the resultant in case of the like parallel forces is same as that of the direction of either of the two forces. The direction of the resultant in case of the unlike parallel forces is the direction of the greater force out of the two. So, this is the brief information about the like and unlike parallel forces and their magnitude and resultant. <coughs> Now, let us uh, imagine that there is a material body, on that body you are going to apply some force. As we all know <coughs> by applying some force on a material body which is at rest, we can make the, uh, we can change the original state of the body. I mean that body which is under rest because of the influence of the force that body start to move. So, the motion in this case definitely it is a linear. The summary is if you apply some force on a body which is under rest then the bo that body start to move in the straight line. Instead of applying a force in instead of applying a force on a body which is free we have a uh, some material body, you can consider some meter scale. We have a meter scale, assume that this is a meter scale, it has two free ends. So, to one of its free end is fixed to some rigid support say wall by using some piece of nail or anything else etcetera. Now, one end has been fixed. Now, to its free end let us apply some force on it. So, the situation is very much clear, we have a meter scale, out of its two free ends, one of the free end is fixed to some rigid support using a piece of nail, to its another free end we are going to apply some force. Definitely here also you can observe the motion, definitely the motion in this case is not a linear, but it is a circular. The body start to rotate like this, is it not? So, in such a case you say here this body start to rotate instead of, <coughs> instead of having a linear motion. The change is in the previous case that body is not fixed, it is free. So, on the free body we are applying the force that body suffer with a linear motion here one end of the body is fixed to its free end we are applying the force in this case the body moves but the nature of the motion is not a linear it is a circular. So, this rotating effect of force we technically called by a name moment of force. So, what is moment of force means? Simply moment of force is nothing but a rotating effect due to force, rotating effect of a body due to the influence of force you call it as a moment of force, rotating effect of force is called as a moment of force, even it is also called as turning effect of force. Moment of force is also called by one more name it is torque. So, with respect to literature torque means to twist. So, this is the <coughs> literature meaning according to Latin language to twist. So, moment of force is abbreviated by the symbol. So, read it as tau. The rotating or turning effect of force is called as a moment of force. The best example for the moment of force is opening and closing a door or doors of even window. For example, 
this is your main door so it has two ends one end of which is fixed or hinged so to its free end you if you are going to apply some force on it when it opens or close its motion represents a arc of a circle so arc of a circle means it moves circular it, it represents circular motion or a rotatory motion so by practical experience only you came to know if you apply some force on the free end of this door that door can open and close comfortably instead of applying the force on the free end you are going to apply the force on the end which is nearest to the point where it is fixed you can experience a difficulty in opening and closing of a door so by this simple practical example you came to know the rotating effect of force may not depends only on the what force we are applying on its free end it also depends on the perpendicular distance between the point where the force is applied and the point or axis about which the body is rotated is it clear so it is very easy to open or close the doors or doors of a window when we apply the force on its free end if you are going to apply force on the point where the door is fixed you cannot observe the rotation in such a case the moment of force is zero so that's why so <coughs> it is uh, clear that the magnitude of moment of force i mean the rotating effect of a body because of the influence of the force not only depends on the application of the force it also depends on the so perpendicular distance between the point of application of the force and the point or axis about which the body is rotated so therefore with respect to this concept moment of force mathematically can be defined as moment of force can be calculated or defined mathematically as uh, product between the force applied and the perpendicular distance between the point of application of the force and the point or axis about which the body is rotated point of application of the force is this the point where it is fixed or axis of rotation is this so this is referred as l r s anything etc this is also called as the moment or um moment of force is nothing but a four product of the force and the moment or um this is how mathematically moment of force is calculated now the question is <coughs> what is the si unit of the moment of force you know that force is expressed in si unit as newton and length is in terms of a meter therefore newton meter is the si unit of moment of force now what is the dimensional formula or dimensional equation of moment of force you just recall how you are writing the dimensional equations for the different physical quantities force force is given as mass into acceleration so acceleration is velocity divided by time velocity is displacement divided by time you just recall so the dimensional equation of force is l1 m1 t minus 2 again one more length is there l already is there l into l is l square therefore you can rewrite this one as l square m1 t minus 2 now you can say dimensional equation of moment of force is 2 in length 1 in mass and minus 2 in time now in this concept you concentrate what is moment of force just rotating effect or turning effect of a force is called as a moment of force it is also called by the name torque it is abbreviated by the symbol tau how mathematically moment of force can be calculated mathematically it can be given as the 
product of the force and the moment arm where moment arm is nothing but a perpendicular distance between the point of application of the force and the point or axis about which the body is rotated. Its SI unit is Newton meter and its dimensional equation is 2 in length, 1 in mass and minus 2 in time. So, give example for the moment of the force means opening and closing of a gate or even so tightening and loosening of a nut using a spanner. As the size of the spanner is big, then clo opening or closing of the nut is very easy. Opening and <coughs> fitting of the screw using a screwdriver. If the length of the screwdriver is more, you can fix it easily, you can detach it easily. So, these are all the few examples for the moment of force. So, we say rotating effect of force is called as a moment of force, but uh, we know that moment of rotation is of the two type. The body may be rotate in this type. So, instead of this suppose if you apply the force on the same body where which is fixed at one end in this way we apply the same type of the force in this way. So, then the body rotate in this fashion it is anti clockwise rotation this is clockwise rotation is there is no is there the same definition holds good for both the cases I mean the rotate you are saying just rotation of force. So, turning effect of force rotation may be uh, anti clockwise direction or clockwise direction is there any special convention there is a small special convention is there. So, if the body rotates anti clockwise direction because of the influence of the force then in such a case you can call the corresponding moment of force as positive you call the corresponding moment of force as positive. Suppose the body rotates by the influence of the force in, in, in the form of clockwise direction then corresponding moment of force you call it as negative. So, the summary is <coughs> there are two types of moment of force one is positive moment of force and negative moment of force moment is positive when the body rotates in the anti clockwise direction similarly moment is negative when the body rotates in the clockwise direction this is about the brief information about the moment of force so from the examination point of view also this moment of force is very important <coughs> now we have a practical experience that so in a tap water is pouring we are going to we are interested to stop the uh, water so to the tap is closed at least we use the two fingers to open the tap also we using the two fingers suppose if our pen is a parker pen to open the cap of the pen at least we use two fingers to close it also we use two fingers to the steering wheel of an automobile to operate the steering wheel of an automobile. So, we use the two forces simultaneously in all these examples. So, the body is under rotation just like the moment of force here the rotation is not done by the influence of a single force here the rotation is done by the influence of a pair of forces pair of forces is uh, uh, literally called as couple. What is couple? Now, the question is couple means pair. So, here pair of forces that is all. So, the specific definition of couple is two equal, but unlike parallel forces not acting along the same line. We have two equal unlike parallel forces, but they not act along the same line. If they act along the same line, the resultant is 0. So, since they are not acting along the same line, definitely there is some resultant 2 equal, but unlike parallel forces not acting along the same line will constitute a couple. So, schematically you can express the couple like this. So, this is these are the two forces F1 and F2. 
so two equal but definitely they are unlike parallel forces not acting along the same line will constitute a couple what is the effect of couple we say rotation in the examination so for one mark so the question asked like this what is the effect of couple you can say the effect of couple is to produce pure rotation of course without any translatory motion so i mean couple produces only rotation so no translatory motion so the effect of couple is pure rotation now what is this rotating effect of couple we say rotating effect of force as moment of force here the rotating effect of couple we call it as a moment of couple define moment of couple for two marks so under that circumstance you don't say two equal unlike parallel forces not acting along the same line it is a definition of couple what is moment of couple means rotating effect of couple you call it as a moment of couple so how can you calculate moment of couple means so here also rotation there in moment of force by the influence of one force here by the influence of two forces it is simply the product of the any one of the force here we have the f1 and f2 literally we says both are equal in magnitude you can choose f1 no problem you can choose f2 there also no problem so the magnitude of the any one of the forces and the perpendicular distance between those two forces suppose the perpendicular distance between those two forces is d so you can say moment of couple either f1 or f2 into d moment of couple is equal to f1 into d so product of any one of the force used and the perpendicular distance or distance of separation between those two forces again what is the si unit of moment of couple is the newton meter the unit of moment of couple is same as that of the moment of force what is the dimensional equation of moment of couple so by common sense you can say so the dimension equation of moment of couple is also 2 in length 1 in mass and minus 2 in time again force is l1 m1 t minus 2 so length distance is nothing but a length l square m1 t minus 2 so the unit and dimensional equation of moment of couple and moment of force are one and the same so by the influence of a couple the body is rotated so what is the work done by the couple <coughs> so no derivation is there for this case what is the mathematical expression for work done by the couple so it is given as 2 pi n c 2 pi n into c where c represents the moment of couple it is moment of couple is abbreviated by c where n represents number of rotations made by the body by the influence of a couple so equation used to calculate the work done by the couple is 2 pi n c where capital n indicates the number of rotations made by the body by the influence of the couple where c represents the moment of the couple so this is the uh, brief information about the one of the small topic couple definition of couple what is the moment of couple what is the unit and dimensional equation of moment of couple what is the expression for work done by the couple so examples for the moment of couple you can expect so one or two marks from this topic in your examination <coughs> Now let us concentrate uh, one more concept in this chapter that is condition for equilibrium of the coplanar parallel forces. So I mean in a same plane when number of forces acting on a body such that those forces are in equilibrium to have such a situation 
what are the physical conditions. So, you should understand the concept there is a <coughs> body on that body the number of parallel forces acts on it simultaneously of course, on the same plane. If this is the situation that body is unmoved under that circumstances we came to know those forces acting on that body are under equilibrium. So, that body is unmoved means we have two types of motion nature of motion we defined with respect to this level it is two one is the linear motion another one is the circular motion. I mean when number of coplanar parallel forces acting on a body the body is under rest means that body does not experience as a linear motion and does not experience as a circular motion that is the concept is it clear. So, so in a plane you can observe so, the body which is uh, imagine that which is fixed at O. So, you say apply F 1 like this and F 2 like this apply F 1 on the plane at A F 2 at B. So, then F 3 is at C F 4 is at D this is F 3 this is F 4 D then this is F 5 which is at E. So, we have a parallel forces acting in the same plane. So, assume that the body is hanged or fixed at O. So, what is the condition for these coplanar parallel forces are in equilibrium? The condition is the body does not shows any sort of the motion. So, does not show any sort of the motion means it does not suffer with a linear motion and also the circular motion. So, the linear motion may be of from top to bottom or from bottom to top. At the same time, it may be from left to right or from right to left. Here, so the body does not move from top to bottom or from bottom to top means, so forces the magnitude of the forces in one direction must be equal to magnitude of the forces on the another direction. For example, if you apply 50 Newton of the force on this particle in this direction at the same at the same time if you apply same 50 Newton of force on the on this body under the opposite direction definitely this body is under rest means the forces are in equilibrium and that body does not suffers with a linear motion. I mean what I want to say is if a body does not shows any sort of a linear motion only when the sum of the forces in one direction are must be equal to sum of the forces in the another direction. In, a, in another way you can say the magnitude of the upward forces must be equal to magnitude of the downward forces. In a single sentence you can say a body does not suffers linear motion when the algebraic sum of their forces must be equal to 0. So, here these are F 1, F 2 and F 4 are the forces acting in the downward direction. F 3 and F 5 acts in the upward direction. According to this condition you can write sum of the downward forces that is F 1 plus F 2 plus F 4 must be equal to sum of the upward forces which are the upward forces here it is F 3 plus F 5 sum of the upward forces must be equal to sum of the downward forces or even you can rewrite this one as F 1 plus F 2 plus F 3 I will transfer to the left hand side it will becomes minus F 3 plus F 4 plus F 5 will be transferred to again LHS it will become minus F 5. So, the remaining on the right hand side is 0 algebraic sum of the forces must be equal to 0 gives the no linear motion. Then what about the circular motion or rotatory motion means <coughs> 
the body does not show the circular motion when the magnitude of the positive moment of force must be equal to magnitude of the negative moment of force. So, we, we came to know there are two types of moment of force, one is the <coughs> positive moment of force, it is, uh, uh, it is uh, obtained when the body rotates in the anti-clockwise direction, another one is the negative moment of force, it is when the body rotates in the clockwise direction. So, here you assume that the downward forces rotate the body clockwise, upward forces rotate the body anti-clockwise, I mean some of the positive moment of force must be equal to sum of the negative moment of force. So, or you can say sum of the anti-clockwise moments must be equal to sum of the clockwise moments. Now, try to write the moment of force in each case, assume that the body is fixed at O. So, when the body is fixed at O, so what about the moment of force due to F1 means force applied into the distance of uh, distance between the point of application of the force and the point or axis about which the body is rotated. F1 into O at O it is assumed to be fixed F1 into O A plus again what is the moment of force due to F2 again it is F2 into distance of separation O B then what is the moment of force because of F 4, this is F 4 into O D. So, this gives the negative moment which is equal to positive moment, positive moment obtained when the body rotates in the anti-clockwise. So, this is F 3 into the distance is O C. plus what is the moment of force because of F 5, this is F 5 into <coughs> so distance of separation is O E. So, according to this condition there is no linear motion, according to this condition there is no circular motion. So, this condition vanishes the linear motion, this condition vanishes the circular motion. If there is no linear motion, no circular motion, even though there are number of force acting on a body simultaneously means the body is under rest and these forces acting on a body, so are in equilibrium. From the examination point of view, this question is very much important. So, question is, uh, is in the form of what are the conditions of equilibrium of coplanar parallel forces. To have a coplanar parallel forces are in equilibrium, the following are the conditions. Condition number 1 the body does not shows any sort of linear motion and the body does not shows any sort of rotatory or circular motion. If your question is limited only for the two marks, this extent of answer is sufficient. Suppose, uh, so stay what are explain what are the conditions for equilibrium of a coplanar parallel forces uh, acting on a body means. So, after writing those two conditions, you have to write the figure and mathematically you can write the those two conditions according to uh, the <coughs> condition uh, which shows no linear motion, write the condition which shows no circular motion. No linear motion means sum of the upward forces must be equal to sum of the downward forces. No circular motion means sum of the positive moments must be equal to sum of the negative moments. So, this is about so the basics of statics or the vectors chapters. So, the thing remaining remain to discuss in this chapter is only the problems. So, in the next class, so I may uh, solve some problems on it. Otherwise, I may continue with the some other part of the syllabus. In the final class, I will solve the problems which are to solve for the chapters what I cover so far. Thank you.